Hi everyone, this is David Cochran. Today we're going to work on using Bootstrap's Customize panel to customize the color scheme and the typography in our Bootstrap-based website. So from their homepage, this is version 2.1.1 by the way, you'll click on Customize and it takes you to this nice page. We've used it in a previous tutorial to customize the size of our downloads, both the CSS and the JavaScript. And today we're going to move on down and customize some of these variables to adjust colors and typography for the website. When we're done, we're going to take a site that began like this and we're going to transform it with a new color scheme that looks like this. You'll notice that besides the new color scheme, we also have web fonts pulled in from Google Fonts and we've got a taller nav bar, which I've increased the height using that customized panel. So let's jump in and start the conversion process. First of all, you'll need to grab the files, download them and open them up. You know, you'll find a site that looks like this. We've got three pages, tabs, pills, the index or home page, which is what we were just looking at, and the carousel. And when you open this up from the outset, it starts out looking like this. As you move into the site, you'll see that we've got a page with a carousel and some buttons along the bottom, and we have a tabs and pills page. Now, by using the customize panel, we can easily modify most of the typography and colors throughout the site. When we're done with the customize panel, we're going to find that there's still a little bit of CSS work that we need to do um, directly in the CSS file that we end up downloading but this will get us a good running start. So let's dive in. I'm going to go back to the home page here and I'm going to go to the customize panel. And what this is going to build for us is a custom set of CSS files that um, have the new color scheme and elements that we want. So we're going to go down to three custom variables and we're going to start changing the values of these fields under body background for example, we're going to make this a nice dark uh, gray. So I'm going to use 494949 for that. And if you'd like to check it out, I've included two files that have the custom colors. One is in ping format and looks a little bit nicer to the eyes. The other is in PDF format, which allows you to actually copy and paste those values. So you can look at those there if you'd like to. I'm going to move on in and uh, keep running down and changing some values. I'm going to show you just part of this and then we'll cut forward and start looking at the results together and start tweaking some other elements. So I'm going to even change my blue, a little bit brighter blue to go better with this color scheme. Now I'll confess that I am not a color expert so um, you'll be able to pick apart my color scheme and suggest improvements. I encourage you to do that and just remember that my effort here is just to get you rolling so that you're in control. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to keep filling in the values. I'm actually going to provide um, the values for colors so that you can look at them and follow along. And you'll notice that I've just changed the link color hover. This is going to change the color of our link when we hover on it from the default, which darkens it by 15% to a new lightening by 15%. This is something that's built into less CSS that lets you take a color and fiddle with it in percentages and in other ways. And so it's a great feature and uh, this customized panel is leveraging the power of less to build our resulting files. So I'm going to just cut forward here. I'm going to fill in some of these values and we're going to come back and work on typography. So now I've filled in a number of color values and you'll see that I've gone through and I've changed the headings color to jive with our darker background. The hero unit background is uh, darker than the general background for the body. And I've updated the hero unit heading color and lid color. I've not done things to tables or forms for this exercise. I have done quite a bit of work in the nav bar. And so uh, you'll see that I've made it darker and I've even reversed the way in which uh, the gradient runs by changing the background and the background highlight 
to make uh, the highlight actually darker than the background itself. I've uh, updated brand color, link color, hovers, active states, and I've gone down and I've made the drop downs dark as well. And so we're going to see those results in just a little bit. So that's some of the work I've done in terms of color. Now, another thing I'd like to do is actually make that nav bar taller. So I'm going to go in right here to nav bar height and change that from 40 pixels to 60 pixels. That's going to give us a taller nav bar. All right, so that's the work that I've done with colors and then also with the nav bar. Now let's work a little bit on typography. I'd like to use a couple of nice web fonts from Google Web Fonts, and I've loaded those up already in a browser window. I've chosen Anton for my headings and ABZ for my body font. And so what I'd like to do is uh, employ these in my site. So we're going to, having reviewed these now, I'm going to select them and get them plugged into my site. So I'm going to need to add this line of code to my HTML files. We're going to add it to the head of that document. Many of you have done this before. If you've not, this is how you do it. We're going to take that and go to our HTML files and add this link to the Google Web Font style sheet for these fonts up here. I'm going to put it right under the mobile viewport line here. And so after line 11 in my file, I'm going to make a comment, Google Web Fonts. And then I'm going to paste that line. This brings in just those fonts, pulls them into my page and lets me use them. I'm going to add this to my other files as well. So we're going to do the same thing twice more in the carousel and then in the tabs and pills. There we go. So now that's going to be available to our style sheet. What we need to do is add the appropriate font faces, font families to our style sheet. So the next thing Google Web Fonts does is provide us what we need and we can flesh that out a little bit. But here's my ABZ and then my Anton and we've got the places to add these here in the customize panel. I'm going to actually leave the default sans font family and I'm going to change the serif font family to that ABZ font. There we go. And if I'd like to have some fallback options, maybe I'd like to have trebuchet in there as an option uh, in case, you know, the web font doesn't load. And then I'm going to use the Anton font for the headings font family. So I'm going to place that font family there. Anton, and maybe we want Arial Black if Anton fails to load. That will give us some fallback options there for our headings. Now, because these are already heavy fonts, we don't need to add a font weight of bold. So I'm going to change that headings font weight to normal. That's going to then change that throughout our site. So that sets us up with what we need. We can now go down and grab these files. We're going to download, in this case, customized CSS files along with the rest of the files that usually come down with the bootstrap download. So here it is. And inside we're going to grab the new CSS files. Now I'm going to work with the straight CSS file, not the minified version, because we're going to want to modify some lines in that file in just a bit. But I'm going to rename this custom so that I can keep track of what's original and what's custom. So I'll add this to my site folder. And then I'll update the style sheet links in my HTML files. I'm going to go to index.html and change this from bootstrap min to bootstrap hyphen custom. And first of all, I'm going to see if we're clicking here, see if it's working. So let's refresh. And there we go. It's off to a good start. There's a little tweak we'll have to make. Notice that we want to actually give ourselves a little bit more top padding because our nav bar is taller. So let's actually configure that here in our inline styles is where this comes in by default. Of course, you can move these styles to your style sheet at any point if you'd like, but bootstrap by default just inserts that there between the 
bootstrap CSS and the responsive. So that's where you'll find that. And I can refresh and pull down that body below our nav bar. So there, now we just need to update the links in our other HTML files. And I also need to change that padding top value. So I'm going to do it just like this and copy and paste those values across in a way that gives me some consistency there. I'll just take you a second, save those, and then we can go to other regions of our site and see how the carousel looks. That really looks not bad. Notice that our default button colors don't exactly jive with this new color scheme perfectly. Um, not all of them, some of them do pretty well. But you know, a lot of this really fits nicely. So if there's a little bit more color work we'll want to do. On the tabs and pills page in particular, you'll find that you may want to do a little bit more work. These alert messages um, could stand some color scheme work. And you'll find that actually available to you back at our customize page. These form states and alerts, we've got warning text and warning background, error, success, and info. And I've used for this success, which starts out this light green, and then info, which starts out this light blue. There's actually a heading here that's not showing up very well, so we'll need to adjust the colors for that. And then the tabs and well, this is a well here. We'll need to adjust some of those colors as well. So for some of this, we're going to actually need to go in and edit the CSS itself. And that's where you pull up your inspect tool in your browser and you identify the elements. It tells us where to go in our bootstrap CSS file. And we can drill in there and start doing that work. You're probably familiar with that, so I'm not going to cover that here. But the really nice thing is that we've gotten such a nice running jump start at customizing our site. Notice that even our drop down has a totally new look and works really well. So that's a quick way to get rolling with a new color scheme and new typography. And then you'll just have a little bit of cleaning up to do in the CSS. Now, of course, one other thing you can do if you've not start work, started working with less for your CSS yet, um, Certainly, it's faster and efficient and lots of fun to work directly with the less files themselves. So I'd encourage you to start looking at that. Uh, one of the beautiful things about Bootstrap is that it does come built in less. And as it turns out, working directly in the less files is actually quite a bit more fun than the customized page itself, which isn't bad. So there you've got a good start. I look forward to future topics in the coming weeks. We'll see you then.